So I was really actually an environmentalist before I became a race car driver. You know, the race car became sort of a 200 mile an hour billboard to talk about the things that I cared about. So I used my race car to talk about electric cars and plant-based diets and solar power and things that I really cared about and I felt were important outside of the race car. More and more the racing felt like, okay, it's great I'm getting my message out, but my mind was increasingly somewhere else. My mind was increasingly thinking that this is not the best use of my time. I would like to be you know, full time just working on these environmental issues. In 2013, I bought an electric car. In 2014, the solar panels went up on my home, so I've been solar powered ever since. In that same year, 2014, I became um, the first ever uh, race team to ever use solar power to power our pit box on pit road and sort of show that, you know, you don't have to use a diesel generator out there. You can use free power from the sunshine. I also uh, was honored to be named the number one eco-athlete in the world by Discovery's Planet Green. I had to run a race car like everyone else and run the same fuel. And, you know, that was tough for me because I, I would have loved to have been driving an electric race car. Um, but that just wasn't something that's that's possible yet. So my way of sort of addressing that was to adopt an acre of rainforest every time I sat in the car. And so when I retired, I had adopted over 1,500 acres of rainforest um, to offset that carbon footprint from my race car. A lot of people like to focus on there has to be these big changes in order for us to combat the climate crisis. And I agree with that. But I also think that these, these personal choices that we make are incredibly important and you're affecting all the people around you. And so I think we're getting really close to the tipping point on a lot of these solutions from electric cars to renewable energy um, to plant-based uh, options being everywhere available. I mean, I can even go to Burger King and get a vegan hamburger right now. So things have really changed. And I'm, I'm hopeful that people are waking up and you know, the climate crisis is really sort of arriving in everyone's backyard and there's no denying it now. When I first started driving my electric car, I, it was so unusual to see an electric car here in North Carolina that um, I almost had to really calculate extra time in when I went to run errands because I would go to the grocery store and I'd come out and there'd be like a group of people standing around my car waiting for me to come out of the grocery store so they could ask me questions about, you know, how do you charge? How long does it take to charge? How much does that cost? so many questions just because there were not very many electric cars back then. I think people understand a lot more about electric cars now. For many, many years, the only kind of cars that you could choose from were internal combustion, gasoline powered cars. So even if you wanted to get away from fossil fuels, you didn't have the option to. You were sort of forced into it. And for the first time, people were being given the choice and realizing this, this solution, this innovation, I'm not sacrificing anything. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm getting something that's cooler and better than the original product. And that's what makes people make this shift. In many cases, you also have to keep in mind 
that the electric grid gets cleaner and cleaner every year because we're putting up more solar panels, we're putting up more wind turbines, and the grid itself becomes cleaner and cleaner. So your car is getting cleaner as time goes on. Now I'm really focused on documentary filmmaking because I think that that is such a great way to get people to change their minds. It's one of the few times when you can get people to turn off their phones is when they're watching a movie and that you actually get their undivided attention. And it's amazing how much you can change someone's mind in the course of 90 minutes. So I want to be part of making that change. So I'm working on a new documentary film um, with the Oceanic Preservation Society, the same people that made Racing Extinction, which is the poster you see behind me. And I'm just, uh, you know, working on making the next film is about existential risk to humanity, which I think, you know, that has been something that is more and more on everyone's mind um, because we are sort of seeing the climate crisis really arrive in our backyards. And ultimately, whether humans adapt or not will determine whether or not we survive. Because if we continue to abuse nature the way that we are, and we continue to lo lose biodiversity at the rate that we are, we're sentencing not just all those creatures to extinction, but also ourselves.